Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 31 of May, June 2014 for A-Level Math. Of course, with that being said, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now let's move on to question number one. So here we have to simplify this thing over here, this one and this one. Uh, so first thing first, we do see here we have sine of 2 alpha, so it is double angle. We can break this down uh, further. So this will be what? That will be 2 sine of alpha cos alpha. Now what is sec? Sec is 1 over cos alpha. Therefore you can see, we can simplify this pretty easily. This will cancel out, so you have simply 2 sine of alpha as your answer for part 1. Now for part 2, given that we have this thing plus this thing is this one, find the exact value of cos b. Alright, let's do this. Now, we need to find cos b, but here we have cos 2b. So let's break this down. We know cos 2, this is beta actually, beta will be the value of what? 2 cos square, beta minus 1, times 3, that will become 6, cos square beta, minus 3, plus 7 cos beta. Now we can try to uh, simplify and solve and see what happened. <laughs> so, uh, first thing first is we arrange, you will have 6 cos square beta, plus 7 cos beta, and minus 3. Now, as you can see, this one seems to be a simple quadratic equation. We can factorize to solve this. Now, what is 6? 6 is 3 times 2. Cos square is cos here over here and cos over here. Now, 3 is 3 times 1. Now, we need to get the value of plus 7. So, how can you play with that? We can put 3 here and 1 here. To get plus 7, we have to have plus 9 minus 2. Your answer will be cos beta will be the value of 1 over 3, or cos beta will be the value of minus 3 over 2. Now obviously this is not possible because the value is more than more than 1, minus 1, sorry, because we know that cos of any angle, beta, have to be between the values of minus 1 and 1. This is too much so you will not be eligible. In that case, we have only this one. So cos of beta will be the value of 1 over 3 as exact value. This is your question number 1. Now let's move on to question number 2. So using the substitution u equal to uh, 1 plus 3 tan x, find the exact value of this integral. So one by one, let's see what can we do. So here we have u as this. Obviously, here you will have the value here. But first thing first, we have to find uh, du by dx, obviously, because here we have dx, right? So let's find du by dx. To differentiate with respect to x, that will be 0 plus 3, but that will be sec square x. All right, cool. Now make dx become subject, that will be du divided by 3 sec square x. Now we have to change the limits as well for question involving substitution. When x is equal to 2 pi by 4, the value of u will be the value of 1 plus 3 tan pi by 4. Now this is just 1, that will become the value of, of just 4. Great. Now when x is 0, u will be the value of 1 plus 3 tan 0, and that will be the value of just 1. So your new limits will be 4 on top and 1 below and root this one as you have seen it is simply u divided by cos square x now dx is the value of what dx is your value of this one du over 3 sec square x now obviously we can simplify this further for example uh, 3 is only a multiple can be removed outside so 1 over 3 outside 4 and 1, this will be u power half over cos square x. Now du is du. Now something here we have to know, how can we simplify this? Now here we have 1 over sec square x. Now we know that sec square x is what? It is 1 over 
cos square x. Now how can we rewrite this? That will become simply 1, of course divide by 1 over cos square x. We can simplify this to 1, change that to multiply, and this will go up, and this will come down. So eventually you will just have to rewrite this as cos square x. Now you can see why it became like this. This will cancel out, that's the reason why. And you will have simply 1 over 3, 4 and 1, u power half du. That will be 1 over 3, that will become u, plus 1, that should be 3 over 2. Divide by 3 over 2, 2 will go here, 3 will go down. And then here we have the limits of the values 4 and 1. So simplify. So we have uh, 2 over 9. Here we have u, which is 4, 3 over 2. Minus 2 over 9, 1, 3 over 2. Simplify further. Now we have to simplify this one, obviously. 4 power, 1.5 is 8. That will become 8 times 2 is 16, over 9 minus 2 over 9. That will be 14 over 9. Alright, cool, this is your answer for question number 2 as the exact value. I think the uh, main thing here is to understand we have to find du by dx because we have to replace this of, of course, and then we have to cancel out the cos square at the end. As you can see, you will have just this one in the end. Now this is your question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. So here we have uh, two equations, x is equal to this thing, y is equal to this thing. Now part 1, find the gradient of the curve. So we have to know what is the gradient of the curve? Well obviously it is dy by dx. Now we have to use the chain rule here to define this. As you can see, dy is on top, here we have dx. Now how are they related? According to the equation they are in terms of t, in terms of t, so they are connected by dt and dt. So to find dy by dx, we have to first find this one, and then this one. So first thing first, we first find dy by dt. So here we have y. To differentiate dy, with respect to t, we have to use the quotient rule. It is a fraction, so let's do that. First write the base as it is, so same thing, times d by dt of this one, that should be 3. Then minus the top as it is, then times d by dt of this one should be just 2. Now divide by the base square, that should be just 2 plus t square. Now simplify, let's see what happens. Uh, you will have what values? That will be uh, 3 times this, that will become um, 6t plus 9 minus 60 minus 4. Here you go. Now simplify. The base, of course, uh, you don't need to expand uh, because there's no need. Now for this one, you will have what? This will cancel out, and here you will have 9 minus 4, that should be 5, over this value. This is your dy by dt. Done. Next one here we have dt by dx, but first we have x equal to ln of 2t plus this one. Now how would you differentiate dx with respect to dt? That will be 1 over the value over here, multiply by d by dt of this one, that should be just 2. So it have become 2 over this value. Now finally, once you, have, once you have those two, place them back in the main equation. So as you guys can see, dy by dx is defined by what? By dy by dt, which is this one, 5, over 2t plus 3 square, multiplied by dt by dx. So here we have dx by dt, so dt will be flipped upside down, this will go up, and this will go down. And as you can see, these two will cancel out. So you have 5 over 2 times 2t plus 3 will be your dy by dx. Now, we have to find the value of this when it crosses the x-axis. Okay? Now we should know at x-axis what happens. It's always true. X, y-axis, sorry. Well, x is 0. So at y-axis, x will always be 0. So which means I know x has been given to you by this equation, ln of 2t plus 3. Now if this is 0, what is the value of t? So let's solve for the value of t. That will be exponential 0 is equal to 2t plus 3. 
Now anything power zero is one, that will be one equal to two t plus three. So two t will be the value of one minus three, should be minus two. T will be just minus one. There you go. Now find the value of dy by dx. So dy by dx at the value of t equal to minus one. That should be five over two. Two times minus one plus three. That will be five over two. Minus 2 plus 3 will be just 1. You have 2.5 as your answer for dy by dx, or 5 over 2 as well is your answer for dy by dx. And that is your question number 3. The description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.